Good morning, everyone. Mm, today is Wednesday, September 6th. It is 6.30 in the morning, Tokyo time. Uh, it's 5.30 the day before where you're sitting. So we just finished our Tuesday after the Memorial Day. And statistically speaking, the majority of the market did have a little bit of a pullback. But we will talk about some movers on the second element because I am going to do an ETF slot. So let's take a look at the levels that I set out for us when I was near dead and we'll see how we work, right? So first of all, from a monthly perspective in the SPY, we are still at high, low, lower high formation and we are sitting underneath the close of August and of course underneath the open of September. So as this looks, we are in a fade into the lower edges of the support zone. So my suspicion is pullback action. So many of you know that I really huge fan of studying the macro elements. And so we still have a tale of two stories. People saying that we're going to have a soft landing and people saying we're going to have a um, sharp recession today. Well, not today, my day, but maybe yesterday, we had uh, Saudi say they were going to cut back. Um, indeed, I think that they're just shoring up what it is they have because they're almost at maximum capacity. Now, anyway, it's not like the Saudis can say, oh, no, we're going to ramp up the XYZ. They really are at a large capacity level so we do have to be concerned about that specifically because as gas prices increase it's going to raise the cpi it's going to raise the inflation events and you know that's powell could say hey listen i still have to raise rates we have no idea okay so that is um something that's going to stick in the craw of folks that are either perma bears or people that say hey listen you know this is going to be a fate so remember whenever the broad market starts feeling the same way in terms of what you read see whatever what you realize is that the reverse is more likely to happen because people will pile in and if people pile in short they're going to create the bid underneath because the second they short they become a buyer in the market and so they're looking for some place to cover that being said that's the framework that we're looking under i do see that healthcare is just getting clobbered not really sure why but we've got the big bid in technology the big bid in energy and a continued big bid in uranium and so I have a couple of ideas for us as we move later into the week when I do Fridays. We'll talk about that. But here we are with SPY. As we came into the level notice, we began the day, we gapped down, and we did not fill the gap. That's very, very important. That gives us the backdrop of the bounces are going to be cell zones. Okay, now here's what makes that hard. Look at the slope of momentum. Look at the slope of the LRC, right? The linear regression channel. All of these things are up. And to include, if people go short, they're going to be looking for a place to buy. So here's my first thought. I'm going to slide this one down. And I'm going to say, hey, the overnight level has got to hold where we're sitting right now in the pre-market, 449. If it doesn't, we're going to head to the midline or so of this essentially Marabozu candlestick, right? This candlestick literally has no pullbacks on it. We get in and it, we buy it all the way to the top. It's got two tiny little ticks above and below. So it's a very, very bullish candlestick. People are going to want it to hold. So if they bounce, if you say to yourself, hey, I'm buying 449.14, the top of the edge, 451, that 451 is going to take us back to the close of the week where we're probably going to see sellers in general 
I suspect we're going to have really choppy motion for the next couple of weeks. Take a look at the hourly formations on the day and think about how tough this would be to trade intraday if you were trying to trade a trend. Instead, realize that we're in a chop formation. You buy the base, you sell the peak, you sell the peak, you buy the base. But if it loses the base like it is right now, step away. Do not try and buy it again until it bounces, breaks the old support, makes it become the new support, and then pulls back and holds higher. This is not a safe place to be buying any kind of dip right now, as I do believe we're going to slip through this Marabuzu candlestick. stick. All right, if we take a look at the ES, this one looks much more clear to me because I love the futures market, but we've still got high, low, lower high. We are underneath the close of the prior month. We are underneath the open of the current month and every bounce has been a sell zone, but we're still sitting up in the range here. So my suspicion is, as before, that we are potentially going to be in a little bit of a landlocked pattern that brings us into, yeah, right here, where I had 44.86, maybe uh, 44.59. Listen, when will I be wrong? If buyers come in and they hold this 4,500 and they don't lose it, meaning you don't drift below, you pop up and any pullbacks start giving you higher lows, then you're off to the races. You're in really good shape. All right? But right now, all we're doing is bouncing and making lower highs. And so that is not a good place to buy at all. All right? Let's take a look at the cues. Cues, same sort of thing. Topping formation. They are a little stronger because a lot of folks moved into tech today. So let's take a peek. We are above the close of the prior week. Um, we're still below. No, we're not. Look at that. We've held the close of August. And so now this is in a retracement pattern, but it still is my suspicion that the bounces are going to sell. Why? We've just got a natural drift. So, what are they trying to do? They're trying to recapture the bounce zone back up to 380. That's my thought about where this price action could be up to 380 and then a fade. Additionally, where am I going to be wrong? It's going to hold 375. If it holds 375, then it means that supply is plentiful there in terms of people saying, hey, listen, if it comes in, I'm going to immediately buy it. All right? So that's something that we really have to watch out for. Right now, from a daily perspective, we are very sideways. Look. Gap up. Gap up. Big wicks. Gap up. Complete fade to the base. And now um, a gap down that holds. So this is a nothing burger in terms of range. My suspicion is... We buy the 375, cover at 380, or sell the 380, cover at 375-ish. And that's what we're looking at right now. From an hourly perspective, we can see that we have a high, a test of the base, a lower high. If we test the base again and fade, I would not be buying there. I would wait for this kind of formation to push off the edge before I bought the dip again, or... If I bought the dip, I would keep the stop extremely tight, 50 cents maximum. Let's take a look at the NQs, and we'll be done for this one. People are moving back into tech. NQ sitting right underneath uh, the close of the prior month, and under the close of current month, so it looks a little bit different to the Qs. Just barely above. We had a wow, that's terrible, right? Got a doji on the weekly. And then for the daily, we're really dancing around that area. Oh my goodness. This trading is terrible intraday, right? If you're looking for trend, it's 
horrific to have a doji action. But here's what the doji tells us. It tells us that there's balance in these ranges. And so the key event is going to be, can I hold 15,510? At which point it's going to be bullish. If you lose, I really don't think you ought to have more than 10 points of risk sitting here at all in the queues. And it heads up to the north. We can maybe get to this edge up at the high. But that is my suspicion. And you can see from several hours of trading, it is just really, really tough going if you're looking for trend. I would definitely stay trading the range until the market tells you something else. All right, that's it for this element. I'll pick up some notes on the ETFs we're watching as well as what is going on with Celsius Holdings. I know that that's giving us uh, some trouble there as it continues to hold, but stay frosty, folks. It's going to be really, really choppy for the next couple of weeks.